All right, so here is part three of Rabbit Proof Fence. Um, so we have these girls. They are trying to escape this, uh, basically this Reformation school where they are, you know, being held against their will and they're running away. And we are in the middle of paragraph 35 here. The boys had their own skating area further up in a more secluded place amongst the thick tea tree shrub. Peeping toms never existed in those days. Each group respected each other's privacy. Nearby, a huge fire would be lit and kept stoked. When everyone had finished skating in the slippery mud, they would dive into the icy cold river to wash off the mud, then dry themselves by the roaring friar, dress, and return to the compound. Molly decided to follow the paths made by the cattle. Another attempt was made to cross the river, but once again proved unsuccessful. She walked on angrily, pushing the thick growth of eucalyptus suckers roughly aside, at the same time urging Daisy and Gracie to walk faster. But they decided that it was much safer at, at a distance, and they followed her muddy footprints in silence without any questions, trusting her leadership totally. They were still fighting their way through the tea trees for almost an hour when they heard Molly call out to them somewhere down the track. Yardini! Bukala, bukala! Come here, hurry, hurry! Daisy and Gracie ran as fast as they could along the muddy path until they reached her. Molly was standing near a large river gum. As they stood gasping for wind, she said, We're going to cross here. As three pairs of eager eyes examined it closely, they knew that they had found the perfect place to cross the flooded river. A tree leaned over the water, creating a natural bridge for them to cross safely to the other side. The girls scraped mud from their feet, then climbed under the trunk and watched, walked cautiously to the end, then swung down off the limb under the slippery, muddy bank on the other side. They sloshed through the wet, chocolate-colored banks for at least another two hours, then decided to rest amongst the thick reeds behind the tall river gums. A few minutes later, Molly stood up and told her young sisters to get up. We go, Kylie, north, now all the way. They obeyed without any protest. Ducking under the hanging branches of the paper bark trees, they hurried as best they could, stomping on the reeds and bull rushes that covered the banks on the, of the fast flowing river. The only sounds that could be heard were the startled birds fluttering above as they left their nests in fright and the slish slosh of the girls' feet as they trampled over the bull rushes. Okay, so rabbit proof fence. So the, the main thing that I'm looking for you guys to, to be able to do here is not only uh, answer the couple of comprehension questions here, but we'll also have a reflection that we are going to do. But I really wanted you guys to focus on just the what's happening to these girls. This is just like a snapshot in them trying to escape this compound. <coughs> Excuse me. Where they are being uh, basically taken from their home and tried to brought into white society. I mean, it's this terrible thing that's happening. So they are standing up for this in their own way. Um, again, for reference sake, this is on page 67 in the uh, book or in the online book or page 315 in the textbook. I um, hope you guys enjoyed it. We will talk more about it uh, soon. See ya.